a few years ago, I taught at the University of Hamburg. Absolutely fascinating, the mosque. Um, <clears throat> I went to the mosque and um, I went in search of a wudu place, you know, you must take ablution and so on. When I went to take wudu, <clears throat> after wudu, some people went upstairs and other people went downstairs. And so I thought, okay, perhaps the mosque has an upstairs or a downstairs. And downstairs is normally where the action is. You know, some mosques you send women upstairs where there's no action. So the real show is like downstairs and the side shows are upstairs. So I went downstairs where the show was. And um, I often look at the faces of people and the demography and where they are from and so on. I couldn't notice... Uh, where were those lighter skinned, the Turkish, the Bosnian Muslims that I saw in the wudu place? I saw lots of them in the wudu place. Where were they now? Now they were mostly Arabs. When I came out, <clears throat> I saw lots of Turks and lots of Bosnians, but I did not see them in the mosque. Ah, I, there were two mosques upstairs and downstairs <clears throat> and the downstairs was the Arab mosque and upstairs was the Bosnian Turkish mosque but that wasn't enough now this is really in Hamburg if you go in search of it it's also in the red light district where all the sex happens and I don't want to imply that sex happens only in the red light district um, <clears throat> and next wait, so upstairs downstairs next door was a Pakistani mosque if that wasn't enough and I did have a chance it's like going to a banquet you know so one week you go upstairs next week downstairs and um, the week after that next door believe it or not next door to the Pakistani mosque was a Senegalese mosque in one building you had a choice of four mosques but the story of Hamburg does not take the cake the story of Rotterdam does. In Rotterdam, many of the Muslims in the Netherlands come from either Morocco, more this thing, they come from um, uh, Java or Indonesia or something. Um, <coughs> anyway, so I went to this particular mosque of the Javanese uh, community, the Afana van Suriname. And um, it was absolutely fascinating. <coughs> Um, I had read a book about this community before that and now I wanted to see uh, this place. The place was being run by the, uh, was being financed by the Dutch government. And the Dutch government tries to finance things in the cultural sense, kind of multiculturalism. We can't exactly recognize religious communities and religiosity. So we talk about multiculturalism and we can fund, say, a Turkish institute or a mosque that parades as a cultural center and so on. So this was the Carlos Centrum. And I don't quite know where they got their name from. <clears throat> Went upstairs. Um, and I should really, you know, I was telling you earlier on, I mean, yesterday we spoke about how in Southeast Asia, people are really into high tech, you know, overhead uh, stuff and uh, graphics. I'm not, I come from Africa, okay? <clears throat> but I should really do an overhead thing to illustrate this particular story. So go upstairs. Here is the office of the director of this Islamic center. Um, <clears throat> but no... <clears throat> I have two appointments at this center. The one is on the right and the other one is on the left. So here's the office in the middle and this man is paid by the Dutch government to run this center. There are two mosques in this center. So here's his office. Next to him is a class, next to this office is a classroom. On the other side there's a classroom and then next to the classroom is a large hall which is the mosque. Office classroom, another mosque. Um, but these two groups had two distinct names. Now you've heard it all. You've heard the Salafis, you've heard Wahhabis, you've heard the Obandis, you've heard Sunnis, Shias, uh, Mushriks, Kafirs, you've heard them all. You haven't heard this one yet. On the right hand side, there was the Ostbidders. 
the east worshippers. And on the left hand side was the Vesbiders, the west worshippers. And they called themselves the Ostbiders and the Vesbiders, the east worshippers and the west worshippers. What the hell is the story here? This is a mosque. These are Muslims. This is a mosque. These are Muslims. What is the story here? Now you need to know a bit about your geography to know the story here. The Javanese Muslim community were taken from Java when the Dutch were in occupation of Java. But the Dutch were also, of course, that's where we come from in South Africa. The Dutch had brought us also to South Africa. The Dutch had taken these Surinamese from Java, <coughs> took them to Suriname, <coughs> that is on the south of North America, Suriname, <coughs> took them there. Then <coughs> there were these like the Fijians, you know, <coughs> there were these uh, Surina uh, Jafana who were living there. And as Suriname got independence, the Dutch offered them the right to move to Holland to escape, you know, I mean, living with all of these blacks and so on now in independence. You can never trust these blacks. That's the kind of logic. So <clears throat> they came to the Netherlands. So they went from east. When they were in the east, <clears throat> to the east in Indonesia, in Java, <clears throat> Makkah was towards the west. And so they prayed facing the west in order to face Makkah. And they always prayed there where the sun sets, because the sun sets in the west. Then they moved to Java, <coughs> sorry, then they moved to Suriname, <coughs> and then <coughs> they only knew that they prayed in the direction where the sun sets. But now they were in the opposite direction of Makkah, geographically speaking. <coughs> Their logic then was, we can't turn because then it was also you will remember 30, 20 30 years ago with oil wealth and so on the saudi started sponsoring more and more scholars and uh, the, and that had its own ramifications and so then some saudi based scholars came to suriname and told them no you people are praying in the wrong direction they had two arguments they said look if we praying in the wrong direction then our parents and grandparents all prayed in the wrong direction. Can we say that they were all wrong and they... And besides, um, <clears throat> Wherever you turn, the Quran says you will find the face of Allah. So we can turn into any direction. The other group said no. Well, some of them said no. Then they moved to the Netherlands. And in the Netherlands, the one group persisted in praying to the west and the other group persisted in praying to the east. And so here there was only the Dutch government holding this Muslim community together. <coughs> onto, the, onto the east and onto the west. But the curious thing was, <coughs> when I went to the uh, Vesbiders, when I went to the people who prayed in the direction of, I noticed that the carpets were all rolled up. So I ask about Salah and so on. <clears throat> then they said, no, no, no. <clears throat> we, <laughs> we pray only on Fridays. We're not like those fanatics there <clears throat> who, pray five, who pray five times a day. <laughs> I was astounded. It was the first time that I heard the word fanatic used for somebody that prays regularly.